Welcome to Tail Learn Code. Here there will be tales about software development, learning from each other, code to build solutions. And now your host, Chad Green. Awesome. Well, again, so I was saying, uh, uh, sorry for the couple minute delay there. Um, I mean, Dave just heard me say this, but no one else did because I had to turn my audio onto the stream. But uh, uh, Skype was giving both of us problems this morning. Um, actually, I'm you know I'm having a fun day because I I'm having the one of those things of uh, here I've got a tech issue, so you know of course the first solution that the, uh, the provider gives you is well you know reset your your uh, fresh out your or uh, clear your cache out of your browser. I'm like you know. But I really don't like doing that because now I lost all my cookies, which of course means I lost, you know all yep. my sign-ons are, are lost, and yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's been a fun morning. All right, well, welcome, Dave. I, I, I'm really great to have you on this morning. Um, so it, it's funny. Uh, um, so I run several groups in Louisville, but Dave is the one who is at like every group, no matter what is going on. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, he, you know, it's, you, know, you almost, you, you, you know, if you're at a group and you don't see Dave, you're wondering if Dave's all right, right? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> or if there's some kind of problem with the group. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 yes, or, or, yeah, or maybe I shouldn't be at this group. Maybe there is a problem, right? Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Fortunately, Thursday nights have become my busiest night. Everybody always wants to meet on Thursday nights. So yeah. I, I rarely make it out to the dot nets. And well, you know, the funny thing is that that, that is not just everybody Louisville. Everybody assumes that everybody else is free or something. I don't know. Well, that's not just like Louisville. Competing meetings. <laughs> yeah, that, that seems to be across the country. A lot of meetups are on Thursdays. Mm. You know, which is uh, which makes it fun for scheduling speakers and, mm -hmm. uh, and and you talk about Louisville. I mean, you know, so we've been on Thursday for for ten years. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to change it. <laughs> right. And uh, and honestly, most of the other groups in Louisville that have started, you know, have started well after we started. So I'm like, well, you know, yeah. I'm the grandfather. So, uh, <laughs> although sure enough, to some of the folks running those groups, I could be their well, I can't be their grandfather. I'm not that old. I, I could definitely be their father. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, and they could, you know, and, and I'm definitely old enough. Not only could I be their father, they could have, I could, I, I could be the grandfather to their children. But, uh, yeah. So with that, I mean, so can you uh, quickly introduce yourself, other than the fact that you go to a lot of user groups? Uh, can I quickly introduce myself? I probably can, but <laughs> it's hard to summarize. But uh, the way I often uh, lead off at uh, places where I'm sort of new uh, is that uh, when I was a teenager, I went to work for NASA to write space shuttle software. At the same time, had a radio show uh, for comedy and punk rock. And every day since, it's been even more fun and more strange. I always find it funny that, uh, you know, comedy and punk rock, that's not two things that you would normally equate with each other. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the world stinks, let's fight it, or the world stinks, let's laugh at it, is kind of the approaches, you know. Well, I would say, that I think that does match well, because I mean, that's pretty much what punk, at least initially, that's what punk was all about. It was, mm -hmm. the world stinks, that's, that's you know, that's uh, rage against the, the world with our, you know, with our music. Yeah, you know, um, and then new wave came along, and the world stinks. Let's dance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, on the air, I was known as New Wave Dave. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, uh, uh, I mean, how, sure not. I mean, how has the uh, pandemic been treating you? I'm sorry. How has what been treating me? The pandemic. Oh, um, well, I uh, until this week, I had been on furlough for three months. <laughs> And I'm finally back to work now, which is very nice. Um, and I spent three months uh, just kind of uh, upskilling, mm -hmm. uh, going to lots of online conferences and webinars and classes and workshops, uh, teaching a bunch, things like that, uh, brushing up on stuff that I hadn't done in a while, learning a lot of new things. Uh, oddly enough, I've been more social uh, now that we've all been stuck at home because right. I can hang out with people around the country all at the same time. Yeah, I, this is I've, my first time uh, speaking for a, a European conference, uh, uh, maybe a, a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, for them, I was there their evening, like their their closing session for the day for two hours. But for me, it was three o'clock. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'll have the, I'll, sleep like I would be a, you know, a, a late night thing. See, I'll, I'll have the interesting, uh, in October, I'll be doing an all day workshop on French time. Uh, and they're like, well, do you want us to start at, at 10 o'clock Central European time or 11 o'clock Central European time? I'm like, that's either four or five in the morning. Uh, might as well start at, <laughs> I was yeah. like, might as well start at 10 because that's what, you know, people in Europe are going to want to expect it to be. Uh, yeah. Either way, I'm getting up really early that morning, right? So it's, yeah. what, what's another hour, right? But, yeah. uh, um, but no, I agree with you. You know, it's, uh, uh, it is great to, you know, Actually, I have not been speaking as much, uh, just because I've been so busy. Well, I haven't been speaking at, at your traditional stuff. I've been doing this a lot um, and doing daily yeah. Twitch streams. But uh, um, yeah, the well, interview series has been really nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But uh, but it, I agree with you. I have been going to groups all over the world. Um, Code, Code with Sean is in the same boat. Uh, so he run he runs the the, uh, the Tulsa .net group. Uh, uh, I've been attending those groups. He, you know, I've seen him all over the place. Uh, I know he was speaking in, in uh, London. Well, was it wasn't London, but the greater London area, like like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, you know, things you couldn't do pre-pandemic, right. right? So, I mean, there are some benefits to the pandemic. You know, yeah. if it wasn't for the what, you know, a couple hundred thousand people have died from it, right? I mean, there, you know, there there are there are some benefits from it, right? Uh, yeah. Um. But uh, okay, so are you are you back at, at Baptist or somewhere else? Awesome. Um, well, I mean, working from home, right? Well, yeah. I, I can go to the office if I go through a safety checklist every day, <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, register that checklist with HR and all of that kind of thing. Uh, but well, I'm I'm remoting in like uh, most people are. Uh, I don't know uh, specifically, but I know a lot of places are planning basically to not. Uh, go back to office life for mm -hmm. several more months, maybe even end of the year, depending on you know, what company and industry and that kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah, like they said in, in the uh, the HR welcome back newsletter. Well, we can't put the work from home genie back in the bottle, uh, which is true. I mean, I, we, I we've always had the ability doing right. the jobs that we do. I I is, uh, at at the office even when we were all working there. Uh, we're all in the same hallway. We all have our private offices. We're you know, closing doors and all that. But all of our meetings would be on WebEx. We'd be, you know, 10 feet away from each other, 30 <laughs> feet. But, well, because, you know, we have two screens and, you know, here's the WebEx we're talking about. Let me call up the thing on here right. and find out. So it was very productive. Instead of, you know, going to a meeting where nobody has their, their stuff with them or or you have to carry it. And, oh, I, I got to find a charger. And then was, let's just sit on this where we actually do our work and, you know, do work while we're talking. And it's, it's Refreshing uh, approach to meetings. There, I was very happy with it. it happened. Well, I, I've been saying for the last couple of months. I'll, I'll be curious, and, and you're starting to see this with the big companies. But uh, you know, what happens with the normal companies? Uh, you know, after all this ends, and, and we can quote unquote go back in the offices. Uh, you know, because uh, you know, for years we've been hearing, well, you know, uh, we can't work from home because of X. We can't work from home because of Y. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, I mean, everyone in technology knew that, you know, well, that's just because you, you want to be able to watch us. I mean, you know, it's nothing yeah. really, st for the most part. I mean, there are, there are some things uh, that either stops or at least makes it harder, right? You know, uh, uh, the connectivity, connectivity, you know, you know and, and it, privacy. Cons I mean, there, there's privacy concerns, yeah. right? Uh, uh, right? I've got a friend who, who's head of IT for uh, one of the local banks. And, and you know, obviously they, you know, they had to make a, a quick shift. Uh, they, had, they, they were lucky because uh, yeah. late last year, before this all started, they had actually did pandemic planning. And yeah, already had. I, I, I was at. Uh, but it wasn't. I don't think it was the .dot net. It was one of the other local groups where he was going through all yeah. of this stuff. You know, before it hit. You know, here's what we're doing. So everything has been remote for us. You know, for a while. Well, they, no, they hadn't been remote. They already had everything put in place. Uh, which talk yeah, about right. talk about awesome timing, right? But uh, yeah. but yeah, and actually, yeah so, at, at Baptist, we had just uh, uh, greatly increased our uh, uh, throughput uh, for network traffic, mm -hmm. like right before it all hit. Uh, so yeah, well, that now we can take you know fifteen hundred or whatever remote connections at once. You know, if, four months ago. It would have been spotty. We'd be fighting for spots and all that. But uh, now, hey, we're we're ready for it. Well, 
you know, not everybody could, but not everybody, you know, can. Based, you know, a, a doctor can't. Exactly. You can tell health, but if I'm, you know, testing stuff in a lab, nope, I gotta be in a lab. You know, things like that. So, like I said, I, I'll be curious to see, you know, what the attitude is, you know, come a year from now, right? Mm -hmm. On on work from home, right? Yeah. You know, is it gonna, you know, is it gonna be so strict, or is it become more of the norm, right? Which, again, you know. I think the tech industry has been fighting for, for you know, at least the workers in the tech industry have been fighting for for a long time. Yeah, the, all, all the knowledge industry, right? Mm -hmm. I did see a, a great uh, a fake article. Uh, it wasn't The Onion, but it was one of, like, uh, one of those things mm -hmm. uh, a week or two ago. That uh, you know, everybody is, is finally back to work and uh, all everybody forgot to wear pants to the office <laughs> on the first day. You know? <laughs> Should a bunch of people wandering around the office in their boxer shorts or whatever, you know, and you know, suits. And <laughs> uh, on Twitter yesterday, someone was asking, uh, you know, okay, so how, how many are, are actually, you know, actually do put on pants during the day? And then someone replied back, pants, what, you know, uh, you know, uh, or no, actually, he was like, because uh, uh, then it was, oh, well, what about shoes? And then, uh, then someone was like, shoes, what real question is, you even have to put socks on, right? And, uh, but, uh, of course, I was like, well, I still dress up every, well, I don't dress like this every day. I dress like this when I'm, I'm in interviews. Uh, yeah. And I normally wear t-shirts and such, but uh, uh, um, I've been like, you know. You've got to protect your, your secret identity, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'm lucky enough that I work for a company that, that's 100% remote, right? Uh, yeah. Before all this start, I mean, it's, uh, we don't even have a corporate office. Uh, uh, I mean, technically, well, technically, the corporate office is a UPS box in in, in uh, Elizabethtown, right? So it's, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, hard to have a meeting there. Yeah, it is hard to have a meeting there, right? Uh, plus, it's in E-Town, right? It's, yeah, but uh, but I mean, it just made a lot of sense for our company, right? Because we're we're not all here, right? We're we're all over the place, but we're a smaller company. We're we're uh, we're about forty people full time, and uh, you know, about half the people are here in Kentucky, but the other half all over the country uh, actually now all over the world so it's uh it was a smart idea for them early on like yeah. i say it's played well for us but with that being said i mean the one thing and i i been dealing with my employees you know uh quarantine work is not the same as, as work from home all right it, it, it's not it, there's different pressures there, there's you know uh um you know it, it's funny I, i'm dealing with one particular employee which actually has been Follow me on Twitter. You see me complain about him, but it's funny because he likes the tweets, so he, I mean, he gets what I'm saying. But uh, you know, you know, he's like, "Well, I, what am I gonna do? I gotta work." And I'm like, "No, you need to take a break, right?" And, uh, yeah. uh, and, and funny, I mean, he's. I talked about he, he, you know he's had some medical issues this week, and, and and he's at the ER, and he's like, "Well, I brought my laptop with me." I'm like, "Why?" Yeah, yeah. The, the the great thing is you can work whenever you want. The bad thing is you can work whenever you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and sure enough, uh, uh, you know, we, we had uh, Scott Hunter, uh, who's head of .NET, at .NET yeah, yeah. uh, about a month ago now. And he talked yeah. about that. It was one of the problems Microsoft was having, uh, yeah. uh, especially with their single guys. They were, and particularly the single guys, right? Because they were yeah. noticing that, you know, those guys had nothing else to do, right? They, they didn't have any family home. They, you know, couldn't go anywhere. Uh, yeah. So they were just working like crazy. Yeah. And, and they had to force it, right? And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm about with this guy. I'm about to take take his team's access away at night, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm about to force you to relax. If, 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 you know, if, right? Like, might stress me out, right? <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, cool. Well, I, I well one, it's a definitely great to company. hear. The, hmm? uh, I used to a publishing company, and I know a lot of people still who are you know professional authors and, yeah. and all of that keep up with them. And uh, back when I first hit a, a friend of mine. Well, you may have heard of uh, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month in yep. November. A lot of people will you know, write you know, two pages a day or whatever, and by the end, you know, maybe it's not any good, but you've gone through it. Uh, she started calling it ViroRimo. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is uh, our chance. And instead of national, you know, the, the virus is forcing us, forcing us to have this. Oh, Dave hey, is freezing up. Stop my novel. And you know, after work each day, you know, doing a remote thing, bam, there it all goes, you know? So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about your career. So, you know, I mean, you, you said you start with uh, NASA. So, I mean, talk about a first gig, right? You know, working for NASA. I mean, how, how did that happen? That is a nice first job to have, yes. And uh, 
uh, from there, I had another real, uh, you know, some really nice things along the way. Like I helped to make the uh, uh, the first uh, virtual reality arcade game uh, that was multiplayer. <laughs> uh, basically, you, you know, at our age, you also remember Wolfenstein 3D, oh, yeah. the one of the very first uh, first person shooters uh, for the PC and all that, and it was really, really good. Uh, it, it revolutionized a lot of approaches, and we oh, uh, we found a way to put that into an arcade cabinet, and I coded the the, the VR helmet thing uh, so that you could look left and right, and it would help control, uh, you know, this is all in partnership with, with id. Uh, and then you would, you know, pay, you know, what, like a, a dollar a minute or, you know, whatever it might be uh, to play this arcade cabinet. And uh, that was another, another really fun thing to do, you know, one of the best games ever made and you know we leveled it up by putting it in vr and uh you know hooking them up together so you could play against your friend instead of just shooting the other bad guys or <laughs> or you know as teammates things like that and then you know homeland security and a bunch of other really cool stuff along the way uh, but the nasa happened uh as a co-op from speed school you were at speed too weren't you no no you remember, right? oh, okay i was thinking you might have been uh, so that's the the engineering program at <laughs> university of louisville uh, they have a co-op, so after your first, say, two years of being in college, uh, they put you at uh, a place, uh, and uh, you'll work there a semester, then you'll come back to class for a semester, then work there, and eventually you get a full year uh, of on-site experience, but spread over you know a year and a half, the way it works out. Uh, and having uh, good grades, uh, I was kind of at the top of the, the list, or, you know, among the top and all of that. So they, which of these interests to you all? That one, that one, that one. And I got the call from NASA. Uh, when I when I got the call, I still had an orange mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, you know, was kind of part of my signature style and all of that. Um, I said, hey, we want you to come and, uh, you know, come down here to Florida. Oh, that sounds cool. And I went down there and... Uh, ended up making sort of a uh, like Microsoft project for launches. Microsoft project didn't exist yet. So, but you know, the whole, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a Gantt chart. Yeah. Yeah. Gantt charts. And well, you know, the, this thing is going to be in space for, we plan like two months, then it comes down. We have this one giant garage, you know, uh, but it can really only, it's, as big as it is, you only want to hit a one shuttle at a time. And then we have to take these parts off and it was, you know, really complex. You know, each shuttle was made of a million parts or something, mm -hmm. uh, and each mission had you know thirty different stages and all of that. And it was a, it was a, quite a juggling act oh, with the yeah. uh, you know software and uh, uh, timelines and uh, uh, hardware and all of that. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine. You know, I uh, uh, my younger days, I, I was in the Marine Corps. You know, I worked with a, an F eighteen squadron, and just the, the coordination of twelve F 18s what was interesting, but you know, we didn't have 30 some odd stages, and you know, it was, you know, yeah, uh, um, but still, the whole, I mean, and our, and our hires could fit more than one, one plane at a time, but uh, but uh, still, there was a lot of juggling around, uh, especially, yeah. you know, sure, I mean, most people were relative, but uh, military aviation in general, but especially Marine Corps aviation, uh, there's never enough parts, right? So, we're we were always juggling planes around, uh, uh because yeah. you know, there always be, you know. And we always had what we called our hangar queen, right? So, uh, you know, so you, every, you know, you have a plane that was always in the hangar that you're just pulling parts from to get the other, you know, the other 11 planes uh, up and working. Yep. Um, but the trick is, you know, there's a big deal that a plane must fly every 28 days. Because if, if it goes over 28 days, then you have to file a special report. Or it has to go all the way, you know, up the chain of command. And you don't want to file that report. I, oh, we're losing uh, Dave here. But so, so I was saying, you know, you, know, you, you don't want to uh, lose that report. Let's see, we get him back. Either you, you froze or I froze for a little bit. Whoops, now I, I just lost. There we go. Now there we go. Back. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I was having similar problems last night, but uh, I'm getting reports on my side. Everything is, at least I'm streaming fine. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. Yeah. I think Skype is having some issues. Because like I said, I, I was doing an interview last night and we were having very similar problems. But yeah, so I was talking about how uh, um, 
Yeah, you got the hangar plane. You, you, you didn't want to, you didn't want to go over twenty eight days because that was a big deal. So, so it's always funny around day twenty four. All of a sudden, you, you yeah. brought another plane in, swapping out the parts. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, so, hence, you know, we did not have software to manage that. We had, we had to do it all by hand. Uh, um, although that was one of the things I was doing in the Corps. I was writing, you know, grant you, this was, I mean, this was back in like 92. Uh, yeah. So I was writing quote unquote spreadsheets, but they were very s- simplified compared to what you do today. Uh, right. um, that was managing all that, which was, uh, you know, that was really interesting to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, it was back in uh, uh, 87. Yeah, 87 is when I started there. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, the Challenger had uh, blown up already, uh, and they had basically frozen. Uh, you, you can't hire any new people, you know, for you know a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this was kind of a rotating program. Right. Like, you know, the position is there. Just somebody comes in, and then somebody else does, or whatever. Uh, so me and, and my uh, three buddies were the, like the only people to go through orientation for a long time, you know, as new people. Wow. Uh, and I ended up staying uh, until the, the next one went up uh, our first time back to space in two years, whatever that was. And I got to, to stand uh, a minimum safe distance and, you know, watch the walk, the launch and uh, you get to feel your whole chest and the whole body shake with mm-hmm. everything. It's cool stuff. Yeah, that's one of the things on my bucket list is to be able to, uh, uh, you know, to watch a launch. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think that would be so neat to, to be able to do. Uh, close, close like even, oh, uh, even back then, I was going to all kinds of stuff, you know, to yeah. find something to do. So uh, I started working at the local uh, theater, uh, doing lights and sound for the plays and things like that. Uh, you know, when I wasn't you know, sending rockets into space, you know, getting people off the planets. I would, you know, help people's imaginations come to life and, right. and all of that. It, it, it was fun. Uh, I always like having some kind of uh, art outlet uh, in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I was uh, I was an illustrator before I switched to math and tech with, uh, you know, minor in psychology and philosophy. Uh, and then, you know, got uh, into theater, doing the techie kind of stuff for them. And eventually, you know, found got into writing and founded a publisher publication company and a lot of other things I've done. Uh, but at the theater is where I met my wife. We got married on stage at the theater uh, uh, by the director of the play that we met during who was a justice of the peace and all that kind of great stuff. You know, oh, that's cool. So really cool. Uh, cer- certainly the best thing uh, out of my NASA time, not that the rest was bad, at any <laughs> but it's been going on uh, 30 plus years. Awesome. That, that is really cool. So, uh, um, I mean, so, you know, through all the, you know, I mean, you, you've done a lot of different things and, and uh, I mean, you know, um, you're actually a little bit older than I am. So, you know, you've been, you've been around for a while. Uh, you're not much older than I am, but you're a couple of years older. But uh, um, what, do you, what do you think, uh, you know, through all the time, what, what do you think is the biggest challenges you've seen? Uh, uh, my life, tech in general, the world in general, or? Yeah, well, tech in general, I mean, you know. Hmm. Um, say general, but probably public adoption of technology uh, uh, sometimes is a little too fast, sometimes too slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's usually uh, uneven. Uh, you know, it, uh, this group loves it. This group hasn't even heard of it yet. And, you know, it helped us get to the, the, the digital divide where we are now and, and all kinds of, of inequalities. Um, I say probably the, the biggest challenge as an industry, though, in tech is still uh, security. Uh, for a long time, you know, making it work was the thing. Uh, and then making it not break was, you know, the next thing after making it work. Uh, and security is still seen. It, it's finally, you know, getting the, the respect and attention it needs. But for mm-hmm. a long time, it was either uh, nobody would ever try to do that or we'll just throw something on at the end and it, it was never enough. And, you know, there've been so many crazy breaches and bankruptcies and all the, the terrible things because people weren't thinking ahead uh, or, you know, planning to make sure their stuff is going to stay good and solid. And, you know, all you know, also got the things where how could anybody still be using that thing that I wrote 17 <laughs> years later or whatever. Well, <laughs> that's why the Y2K came up. Like, why do we have Y2K? Because no one thought those apps were going to be used for more than a couple of years, right? It's like, right. oh, this is something just being written. 
that's why I, I talk about this a lot of time, you know, in work, right? Oh, we're just going to write this, you know, this is a throwaway app, you know, 10 years later, right? That app has become critical and yeah. no one knows how it works, right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. uh, that's, um, and I, I would argue, I, I think security has gotten better. Uh, um, I mean, we have good ways to secure things, uh, yeah. um, but I, I, I definitely don't think we're there yet, though, right? I mean, you still look at how many breaches happen all the time, and and and, yeah. and, and, and most of these breaches are, are silly things, right? It's because you didn't do this, right? That everyone knows you should have done, right? And, you know, so, yeah. something so so silly. Uh, oh, uh, I haven't updated that thing in uh, you know the, the last uh, thirty six patches. You know, it's, it's been the same thing, or what? You know, yeah, a, a lot of it is the the really really basic low level mm -hmm. kinds of things. And, and the sad part, I mean, you talk about like uh, not patching. Always ends up becoming. Uh, you know the the the, the alpha and then that moves out and like why are you using that? But so at, uh, starting all the way back like in the, the early like Windows three one days they had a terrible uh, uh, eyesore of a theme called hot dog stand. <laughs> uh, remember that where everything oh, yeah. was bright red and bright yellow were the two. Oh my gosh, I can't even look at that. So uh, whenever I was you know here is my my proof of concept that might become a prototype, I, I would give it a hot dog stand. Like, oh, so nobody would be tempted to push it on without at least making some changes to it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a uh, good thinking. You know, it's, you know, normally I just make a very simple looking, right? But that, that probably would work even better. Yeah. <laughs> First, you know, the funny thing, you talked about patches. I, you know, I think the thing that irritates me more than anything else is people who's, who should know better, but then they say, well, you know, I don't trust so-and-so company, so I'm not going to do these patches. I'm not going to, you know, or, or why is Microsoft forcing me to get these upgrades? I'm like, because yeah. most of the upgrades are security patches in them. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, I almost laugh every day when, when I go to beta news and you see, oh, you know, Windows is forcing you to download this. And I'm like, oh, you mean that security patch that's uh, going to, you know, yeah. it's going to make me safer, right? You know, forget about, I don't, I don't really care about what you do to your computer, right? Right. But, uh, yeah, back then, what was it? Uh, four or five years ago when XP finally got the axe or whatever. And um, all the ATMs had, you, ATMs are running XP. You got to be kidding me. Well, no, we got to update all the ATMs. Oh, my. How is that even? How could you do that? <laughs> well, see, there's a situation where, and actually, a lot of them still are because there's just, you know, the banks are just paying Microsoft to, to have that support for it. But, uh, you know, there, I mean, it's a, a semi-disconnected, right? It's a closed loop. So I, I get that, right? You know, that makes sense. And, and uh, you know, again, the, the cost to make that upgrade, right? Um, that's where it's funny. I mean, you talked about, you know, the, you know, finding that Goldilocks zone of when is the right time to adopt technology, when, right. you know, when not to, when to. Um, I think in that situation, is actually a good situation where maintaining a, a level set, Makes sense because you know you know where all all the bodies are hidden, right? You know you you know it's uh, um, the thing about XP is it hasn't been updated in, you know, in over a decade, uh, yeah. so you know where all the problems are, right? Right. Um, and like with the banks, it is a closed loop. Uh, you know, it actually, I mean, those loops are pretty pretty untied. I, I I did some work for financial institutions. Couple, uh, well, it's not twenty years ago, but. Uh, um, yeah, I can't be when you get older, you know, when you say a couple of years, you know, a couple of years can easily equate to a decade, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, when I was uh, doing finance stuff, that was one of the coolest jobs I ever had. I got to use a uh, uh, got to work on the fraud detection and prevention system. So I got mm. to use data to catch bad guys. That yep. was really cool. <laughs> no, I, yeah, it's, um, I have not done that, but I've done some uh, reading about it. Uh, okay. I've, I've been. The last couple of years, I've been very interested in graph databases, and that yeah. is one of the uses of graph databases uh, yeah. because you know fraud detection is all about finding patterns, and that's what graph databases yeah. are all about. Our patterns for the outliers, yes, yeah. and graph databases are great at that. Yeah, so I haven't. That, that's why I moved from uh, from software to data twenty ish years ago, uh, because I eventually came to realize that the point of almost all software is to uh, collect or deliver data. Mm -hmm. And the data is where all the cool magic stuff happens. Uh, and you can find all these things. And then graph databases are like, okay, it's, that's the reading between the lines for data. Here's what the data is. 
Uh, but here is the way the data connects that you can't see looking at just the data. You know, right. here's the parts that are missing, or here's the things that stand out the most. And yeah, that, that is really cool. It's kind of a behind the curtain for all the stuff that you have. I usually, uh, so I, I do presentations about graph database, and I usually blow everyone out of the water when I tell them that, you know, relational databases are actually not very relational, right? And, and, yeah. And actually, it, and part of the reason is because they were actually designed to be like a ledger. But, uh, you know, hence the reason why you see a grid, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, uh, that was actually what they were designed after were, were accounting ledgers. Yeah. But, uh, uh, whereas with graph databases, I mean, that's its whole theory is, you know, showing data more naturally as it actually exists in, in nature. And, uh, yeah. So, so, sure, I, so something I know that you're, you're involved with, you know, outside of technology is, uh, I mean, you, you talk about theater. I mean, you've kept that up. And uh, yeah. so I know you, you know, and sure enough, this is what you'll be talking about. But, uh, so you're very interested in improv. And I know you yeah. do a lot of things. So I mean, talk a little bit about, I mean, so what exactly do you do with improv? We'll, we'll get into I, your talk here in a moment, but you know, yeah. just in general. I just make it up as I go. You know, that's what it's all about, right? <laughs> exactly. It's all about learning to wing it. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, that's what I spoke about at the, the European conference uh, was uh, very similar or even maybe the same topic I'll be talking about here, but it was really weird to, to have an improv live workshop with people on another continent and trying to do the interactions of, sure. okay, now, now you and you in the Zoom call, you know, I'm going to have you volunteer for this thing. And it was fun and weird, you know, it was uh, exciting to, to try new things. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's always part of, of what I love doing is when I go to a conference, I mean, I pretty much already know how to get better at the things that I already know how to do. So I almost never go to the stuff that I do for a living. Right, exactly. Uh, because I can already figure out how to get better at that or, or, you know, talk to my buddies who, you know, wrote the book or the software or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll say, uh, I've never heard of this thing. I'll go see what that is and, and go to that. And then always learn. Uh, most of it probably will never apply to, to what I do, but there's always a couple cool things you can pick out of any topic. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I've always loved about uh, sort of diversifying my interests uh, is being able to, to combine them or, or play them off each other or something like that. That, uh, hey, uh, you, know, you know, drone people, here's a cool thing that the, um, uh, the literary community does that can really apply and help you here. Uh, or, you know, hey, uh, uh, comedians, here's a really cool thing that we're doing at church that would really improve or whatever it might be, you know. Mm -hmm. To, to you know, mix the, the peanut butter and chocolate, as it were, uh, you know, with, with groups of people or ideas, technology, that kind of stuff. And uh, I started really getting into to improv kind of as an outgrowth of Toastmasters, the, the public speaking group. So mm -hmm. if you want to learn how to get better at it, then you can join a local Toastmasters group. I think Louisville has between 20 and 30. So, you know, depending on what time of day and what day of the week works best for you. You can probably find something close to you. And you've got 10, 15, 20, 30 people in a room delivering short speeches to each other and then getting immediate feedback uh, written so you'll have a record of what you could improve on, what parts were good, uh, and also spoken. Hey, you know, I'm the evaluator for this speech, and so that way we all learn from every speech. Mm -hmm. But there's also a thing they have there called table topics, which is impromptu questions of the audience. So, let's see, looking, uh, Chad, okay. Uh, Chad, you have, I'm going to ask you a question. You have one to two minutes to respond, and then you sit back down. It could be something simple like tell me about your last vacation or favorite food or explain the economic global impacts of a pandemic. Uh, you, never, you never know what it's going to be, but you have to be able to uh, come up with a cohesive answer. And as a friend of mine said, uh, the truth is not an obstacle uh, to answering a table topic question. Yes, as long as it is something <laughs> and it, it sounds reasonable, right. you can do that. Because 15 years ago, I had a stroke. I had to learn to walk and talk again. It was, it was fairly mild. Uh, but there are still a lot of things I can't mentally do that I know I used to be able to. So I thought, hey, well, I got a reset button. You know, I, I can uh, you know, focus my life in a different way now. I don't have to stick in the same patterns and ruts and habits that I had been in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started focusing more on people and less on tech. You know, I'm still in tech all the time, but kind of uh, switched from, from introvert to extrovert or you know, became the, the omnivert 
Mm-hmm. I've heard ambivert. It's like a little wishy washy, but no, I'm all the birds. I'm the omnivert. I can do whatever I want now. And uh, table topics at Toastmasters uh, really helped me get my gears running again. Uh, you know, part of the brain is you know, suffocated and died, so I had to build new patterns, new pathways, all that. And uh, by uh, you know three, four times uh, in a, a week, uh, being asked a weird question and having to come up with something was very, very good practice. Uh, so that also got uh, developed my interest in improv. I'd always thought it was really cool and amazing how they could do all this stuff. Uh, and then I started getting involved in the local improv groups. Uh, a lot of them would have what they would call an improv jam, basically a free practice session, uh, not an audience, just you know, 10 or, or 20 or whatever, uh, people who want to get better at improv, sort of like Toastmaster groups might mm-hmm. have been. Uh, or like a lot of our user groups are. Hey, I, we're all learning this tech together, and I just found this cool thing. Let me explain it to you. Uh, so, yeah, the improv jams are usually you know, free. might be once a week, once a month. We get together, we practice, we learn, get a little better at it. And apart from improving my creativity and communication skills, uh, the improv, uh, it sounds weird, but it helped uh, remove stress. Uh it, it sounds like a really stressful thing. How can you get up on a stage and not know what you're going to say until it happens? Well, it, when you've done it enough, uh, then you go to the office and, oh, my gosh, the wrong number's on this report. Well, okay, we'll put the right number on the report. It's okay. You know, yesterday I was a firefighter uh, and also a bunny rabbit at the same time. This is not a big deal. We can change it. You know? <laughs> no, I, think, I think it makes a lot of sense because, you know, uh, um... I mean, one, there you're, you're learning to adapt, but I mean, also, you know, uh, um, I mean, just like, uh, uh, you know, like when I'm not coding, one of the things I like to do is work on Legos, right? And, and okay. it's because I'm still using my, my mind, right? It's it's not a mindless activity, right? Right. Uh, um, and sure, if you could see you it. You usually, but, like, freeform building whatever you want? Or no, you I'm, not, I'm not that creative. Okay. I, I, build, I build kits. Uh, well, you you can see it, but most people can't. You can you can probably see my uh, my my star destroyer oh, yeah, up, there's up there. Star destroyer, I see it. Yeah. Um, now everyone, uh, uh, what like five six feet long or that is uh, a little bit over four feet long and a little bit right. over two feet wide. That thing's massive. Cool. Um, All right, man. Actually, everyone on the stream doesn't know what we're talking about because they, they don't see it. You're actually seeing me through a different camera than everyone else is. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, and and hey, the camera is a life size star destroyer in his house. You know, it's, it's almost as big as the city, but somehow it's right there in the room with it. Yeah. You're missing it all. <laughs> I got to admit, there, there is a kit I want to get, which is not its not an official Legos kit, but uh, uh, there's a, a, the uh, Star Destroyer over uh, uh, Jedi. Which, if you remember from, um, uh, uh, oh, what's the movie? The first uh, first non-Skywalker uh, movie. Rogue One? Rogue, Rogue One, yeah. yeah uh, if you remember... Yeah, you, know, you had the city that had the the the, the uh, Star yeah. Destroyer over it. There's actually a Lego set that you can build. Really? Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to get that. Uh, uh, and of course, it's called minifigure, right? So I mean, it's you know, it's about so big, yeah. right? But uh, uh, I've been really wanting to to, to build that. Um, probably in the next couple of months, I'll, I'll probably end up getting that one. Uh, yeah, one of the the groups I'm in had a, an online poll of of which Star Wars trilogy was the best. Uh, you know, the middle three and then the last and the first. And I said, no, it's a trick question, though. The best trilogy is to watch Rogue One three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admit, I, I, uh, I don't get so picky about Star Wars. I just love Star Wars, right? And it's, it, yeah. you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, everyone talks about how, how the prequels suck so bad. And I'm like, you know what? It was still Star Wars, right? And I still enjoyed every bit of it, right? You know, it was, yeah. I mean, was Jar Jar a little bit annoying? Yeah, sure. You know, what was, uh, you know, was Anakin a little bit wishy-washy? Yeah, but also, guess what? He was a teenager, right? You know, aren't most teenagers a little bit wishy-washy, right? <laughs> it's, uh, um, and we can go about, some, you know, some of the content, you know, some of the script needed work, right? But, uh, uh, but, uh, but so did uh, in the original trilogy, you know, it's all yeah. right. Yeah. And it's it's still your favorite food, you know. A bad pizza is still pizza, you know, or whatever. Exactly. Your favorite yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so let's talk about your, your your presentation, right? So you're gonna be uh, it's called Agile Improv, right? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, 
Is it geared? I mean, who's it geared towards? Is it geared towards everyone in tech? Is it geared towards more tech leaders? I mean, what is it really geared towards? Uh, I have no idea because I haven't written it yet. Okay. And uh, I probably won't write it until a few days before. No, I don't know. Well, she's um, just improv, right? You know, but anybody who uh, you know has done or thinks they might do some agile, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things in common. You know, doing a little bit uh, and then making that bit a little better by you know adding something to it or you know, maybe taking something away and making it you know, more more of a pure original form uh, of working with people, of uh, adapting as you go. Uh, a lot of things are very similar, and uh, the uh, improv uh, exercises that, you know, just like a, a singer might do the me, 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 me kind of thing, mm -hmm. a lot of improv jams or sessions will start with some um, really simple warm-ups just to get people moving and using their brains uh, and remembering a, a, a list of names or whatever it might be. Uh, going through a lot of that uh, can really help the uh, agile experience mm -hmm. uh you know it'll dovetail you're learning the same skills in a different way uh it's like you know a, a stretching out before you go for a jog uh knowing how improv works and practicing a little bit it's going to improve your work in the team it'll improve your relationships on the team uh and uh, uh combined with that that'll also improve your the quality of your output and quite possibly the uh, the speed of your output. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's cool. Uh, um, and, and obviously, I mean, uh, no one has to have any experience with the improv to, to, to do this. So you just need to. I mean, my my reading of it is you just need to you need to be able to, to open up a little bit, right? Which is a little bit hard for, for software developers to do. Uh, um, open up a little bit and, and, and be willing to experience something a little bit different, I think. Yeah. Uh oh. And well, that's, that's what Agile is. It's, uh, you know, different every uh, you know, sprint or cycle or, you know, whatever, whatever flavor of Agile you're using, software is always changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, your, your, your project is changing. Well, I said I wanted this, but now I wanted to do that. Okay. And, uh, oh, uh, can you add this thing into to, you know, for these other people? Well, sure, we can do that. So I can do anything. You know, what, what, what do you really want? <laughs> that's, that's always the hard part to figure out. <laughs> that's usually my answer to stakeholders, right? When they ask, well, you know, what can we do? I, well, I can do anything you want, right? It's just, yeah. you know, giving time and money, right? We'll, we'll make it work, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every now and then people will say, uh, I, I want this thing. How, how long will that take? <laughs> well, we, with no, well, I, I say it will take uh, a, a million dollars and ten years. Are you crazy? Well, well, if if you give me you know, some more details, I could probably pare that down. Right. But I always said it, it's way out. I'm not going to give you any kind of. I can have this done in three weeks. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Um. Cool. So, uh, uh, so I'm curious. Do you have any? Uh, or no? Let's talk about this. Um. So you're in data, right? It, is there anything uh, new or, or something you're just now experiencing within data, especially you, you spent the last couple of weeks or, you know, past couple of months uh, mm -hmm. doing a lot of stuff. So is there something new or interesting you really, you know, really caught your attention recently? Um, it's been around for a while, the machine learning AI. I've been delving into that a bit more. I was at a really cool talk yesterday, the day before, about uh, uh, machine learning for social good. Uh, this is part of a, a an ongoing series. It was only an hour long, and they had three uh, groups. So everybody had you know twenty minutes ish. Uh, the first one, uh, they were uh, using AI on medical journals, uh, so that way, uh, you know, if I want to look up uh, some research for COVID or whatever I might be doing, I say I, I know I want to start with you know this journal, which is you know a really good one, uh, you know, and this topic. And, you know, maybe something within the last three months or something like that. And I can start doing that. And with a normal search engine, uh, you know, you'd, you'd find this reference, these, you know, five studies and three other works or something. And here are the authors. Okay, I want to see what else that author has done. And But this will look at all of those facts and say, now, you didn't ask for it. But here is something that is really, really similar to what you're looking at. That, or, or here is something that started with all of the same research and it's citing all of them, but it came to a different conclusion. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, and, and they 
zoomed out from their visualization and but you you've seen what data diagrams look like and what you know the graph and it was like 38 layers deep or something crazy like how could, it's, it, it looks like a brain you know rather than a diagram and like well, really cool stuff they're doing there uh in fact i'm i'm working uh uh, looking at a, a startup on the side right now uh, that's going to be using uh, AI uh, to match jobs and uh, resumes, okay. uh, and using not just you know the the, the posting and, and and the skills and all of that, uh, but also some aspects of personality and uh, of values and goals. The, a lot of the non tangibles try, try to mix, uh, and you know here. Uh, I, I want you know here is is my resume or whatever it is, and well right now you would match. Five million jobs. Um, well, I, I want a job in this particular industry. Okay, that will match this many. You know, kind of narrow down how mm-hmm. how good you match a thing. And on the employer side, same kind of thing. That uh, this job description right now uh, will match. You know, point three percent of the uh, the information technology workers. Like, yeah, that's a little narrow. Well, well, what can I? You know, okay, you probably don't need ten years. You know, three years experience in this particular field is probably okay. And oh, now you've opened it up and and Things like that, almost like a, a a dating app for jobs, kind of, you know. Uh, maybe it'll help uh, uh, people get away from this notion of uh, entry level has to have uh, two years experience. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still see that yeah, all the time, yeah. and, I, and I'm like, two years experience in the technology that was only invented this year. So uh, go on. <laughs> well, there's that too, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, I still rem- I still remember when C Sharp was new, and it, and it, you know, it was like, oh. We want five years experience. I'm like, look, I was on the beta team for Microsoft and I only have two and a half years experience. So I don't, I don't know who you're going to find. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually had that conversation. I mean, way, obviously it was way back when, but I, I really had that conversation. Uh, yeah. Cause the company, you know, the company I was working for at the time when, when .NET was in beta, it was a partner with Microsoft. So we were actually getting physical disks from Microsoft. Cause back then you couldn't download the stuff. Right. And, yeah. Of course, nowadays anyone can, you know, almost anyone can preview it, right? Uh, um, but in those days, you had to be a partner, and you, you know, you had to have special status, and and uh, uh, yep. so I was getting those. But and I, you know, later on, you know, because then the dot com bust happened, so then I was looking for work, and yeah. and I remember being in a conversation like, oh, well, we're, you know, we really, you know, you don't have enough uh, C sharp experience. I'm like, well, um, good luck finding someone because I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when it started. I yeah, I, 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 I was like, well, I, I think I even made a comment. I don't even think Andrews had it in his mind five years ago. So, uh, um, you know, so I'm not sure he would even qualify for this. Show. Right, and of course, right. yeah, no one knew who I was talking, especially back then. No one knew who yeah. I was talking about, right? It's, <laughs> and another thing that we, we hope our AI can do is to help uh, HR, like, like maybe like balance or audit or something of, you know, it takes, say, 100 resumes to get an interview, uh, and then it takes 10 interviews to, to find a job and, and that kind of thing that, uh, well, you, you might not realize that you're screening out, uh, you know, 80 percent of the people uh, who were you know, born outside of our region mm-hmm. uh, or you're, you're leaning more towards uh, people in this age range and you're excluding those like, oh, I didn't really mean to do that. You know, things like that. To, to, well, I'll tell you, the pro- I always uh, had the opposite sure problem. They're, they're staying on track, you know. I always had the opposite problem, especially when I was working at HP and I was working for, at Fort Knox, you know, on a contract that required everyone to have a secret clearance. And, and, uh, and of course, one of the requirements to be, have a secret clearance, you must be a citizen, right? I mean, you're not going to get a clearance. Yep. Although, I think there are some really rare exceptions, right? But I mean, they're extremely yep. rare, right? And, uh, you know, I, I would get these resumes from, from my recruiters who were supposedly vetting these folks first, right? Mm-hmm. And I read it, I'm like, okay, he graduated from, you know, India, such and such. Six months ago, yeah. and I'm like, I'm sure he's a great candidate, but I highly doubt he's a U.S. citizen. Did you ask? Yeah. With security clearance, right? Uh, well, well, we can get him the security clearance, but I was like, but not if they're not a citizen yet, right? <laughs> you know, and and, uh, and and the guy now, in their their defense, they're like, well, that's a little hard for us to ask. I'm like, yeah, except for it's a requirement, right? You know, yeah. you know, it's right. it's <laughs> it's not us discriminating. You know, it is the way how the secret clearance works, right? And, yeah. But I would get that all the time, uh, and I was like, "What? You know, why are we? You know, um, admittedly, it's, I, I got, I got to the point of I didn't, I didn't depend on my 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 internal recruiters. I found my my, my people because I, I had better success. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, because 
I was using my own, well, I was using non-artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever we call human intelligence. I, well, I guess right. human intelligence. But, uh, <laughs> well, cool. So, um, so are, are you a gadget guy? Uh, not particular. Not uh, particularly. We were talking earlier about, uh, you know, the sweet spots or Goldilocks, when's the right time. Yeah, I, I tend to stay behind the curve because uh -huh. everything gets cheaper, you know, next month or when I up. Uh, I'm fine using I me. Mean, the iPhone I have now is six years old, maybe, you know, <laughs> and it's cracked on the screen. <laughs> uh, as long as it works. That's, I mean, the, in the cars I drive, you know, I buy a car for $2,000 and you know, it'll get me here to there uh, for a couple of years and I'll buy another, you know, piece of nothing. And I, I don't like to put a bunch of money into stuff. You know? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I guess uh, uh, that's where you and I differ. I, I'm on the get a new phone every year plan, <laughs> and uh, uh, actually, it's funny. So you see the arcade cabinets behind me, right? And, and uh, uh, um, the recent debate is because of the cabinets, you know, they become, you know, they're going. To, some of the older ones are now in clearance, and so like you, you look at the Facebook groups, and they're like, well, do I really spend five hundred dollars for this thing now? When a year from now, it's gonna be like a hundred dollars, right? And uh, of course, I just sit there like, well, yeah, but. I had it for a year more than I got to play with it, right? You know, so it's uh, uh, yeah, right. uh, uh but uh, uh, you know, I'm sure my wife would prefer that I was I was less uh, uh, <laughs> less adventurous. And that is one of the nice things about Cut Up Blues is you always have a speaker room and you've got what uh, seven, eight arcade games yeah. in there usually or whatever it might be. Well, so last year was the first year for that because I mean I just. These, these actually are still pretty. I mean, uh, they just started coming out about a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, um, and like I said, I love these things. I mean, you know, it's uh, uh, you know, they're three, four size, so they're perfect. I mean, what, what's perfect about them is that I can have a, a room full of them, all right? And I've got a bunch yeah. of them. Right? If you have real arcades, you can have one or two, all right? Because, right. I mean, they take up so much space uh, and then try to maintain them, right? I mean, that's, that's the hard part. Uh, uh, and then the big deal with these is that they're, they're all fully licensed. All right, so you know it's uh, so they're not main cam. I mean, technically, I mean, technically are because they're just running emulators, but yeah. they're officially licensed. The artwork is officially licensed, which really makes them really cool. Yeah. Um, but yes, the one thing we did with Coppola, and we were going to do it again this year. Obviously, we won't. But uh, we we had the speaker lounge. Uh, yeah. Well, and there was always a speaker area, but there's know, always been a speaker area, area but always a part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year, just. Uh, Really, as I started buying these games, I mean, that was my excuse to my wife. It's, well, I need to buy these games because, you know, we're, we're going to take them to the conference. Yeah, it's a work expense, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told her, it's a tax write-off, right? Because, you, know, yeah. you know, it's, and, and she's like, yeah, I don't know about that. Like, well, yeah. but it was. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine years ago had a, a really cool, uh, you know, kind of a similar thing. He was going to be writing a book about the history of comics, so... He had to buy a bunch of comics, and he had like two weeks to realize <laughs> how these are great. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you know, work, work, work. What a shame. Yeah. <laughs> but now I do know, I mean, or at least I know you at least go to the video game uh, uh, convention. So I'm assuming you are a video game fan, right? Um, or is it just uh, you go I to every, every tech well, event in the city? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, an old saying, people who uh, enjoy eating sausage should not watch it being made. Right. Know, after working in the industry, I'm like, eh, eh, I don't really feel like playing them much at many mm -hmm. So I, I hang out because I, I like the people and the tech. Okay. I know all the people who run the arcade uh, uh, expo. I used to work with almost all of them, things like that. They're friends. Um, uh, do you have a, a favorite uh, you know, classic arcade game that uh, has always been your go-to? So um, it's definitely changed as time goes through. Yeah. Uh, of the ones I've got right now, uh, Tempest, which of course is one of the simpler games you can have. I just yep. absolutely yep. love that. I mean, I, you know, it's, yep. that is my go-to. If I if I just need a couple minute break, I'll go play Tempest, right? Because yep. you don't have to yeah, spend a whole lot of time. Similar. I've always liked Quicks, which Quicks, is yep. kind of the same look and feel. Yeah. But I tell you, the one game that uh, I remember from back in the day that I would love to, to find is uh, was it Zaxxon. There were the ship oh, yeah. that fly over the, the, the area. You had to avoid the obstacles and bomb everything. Uh, certainly the first successful 2.5D game. Yeah. It I, uh, the first one, I don't remember. I, I, I remember, you know, as a kid, you know, I, I remember going to the Kroger, 
because they had a Zaxxon game there. And while my mom yeah. was shopping, I was I was there playing playing Zaxxon, right? And uh, I always remember that well. I heard a rumor they're going to be making a Dragon's Lair movie. Oh, I have heard goodness. that. Yes. Wow, that would be so cool. Yeah. Now, for me, I always liked uh, Cubert was my go-to. I have been I've been really wanting a, uh, so I've been wanting one of these as, as Cubert. Uh, they have not come out. It. It's interesting. They they do make other types or other uh, fact, form factors. They have like what they call their I forgot what they call them, but basically it's a little mini game system, right? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And one of those they have they have uh, uh, Cubert. Like no, I, I want the you know I want the three four yeah. I want the one that stands on, on the floor. Right. Uh, um, yeah, Cubert was the other game. I, I had a lot. I've never heard. The funny thing is, is I'm horrible at video games. I, I yeah. I'm not very good at any of them. Right. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy playing them. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now that's why, and I do play. I mean, I don't play just retro games. I do play you know more modern games. But what I won't do is I won't play like the the massive campaign types. You know where where it's you against a whole bunch of people online. Because every time I get online, I just get killed and killed. And I'm like, well, this is no fun, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll play the campaign mode where where at least I, you know at least I have a, a fighting chance. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, video games are what got me into tech, probably like a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, it was the the Infocom and uh, the text adventure games. Sure. Wow, this is really cool. So. You know, back in high school, I, uh, you know, sort of commandeered the the mainframe that they had, and uh, you know, built my own language parser and wrote a text adventure game. You know, several of them. <laughs> it, it was a a nice way to learn things. Oh yeah, I I remember the, remember the good old days of getting the magazines where you you know you had to type because <laughs> you, you couldn't download these things. You had to type in all yep. the code for the, for this game. And have a bid, you get anything wrong, right? Pages of hexadecimal. Type this in, and then you'll have a program. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that bad, but you know, it was. You know, typing a lot of code in, and, and again, you had no idea. You know, there, there weren't real compilers, right? The compiler ran once you, all the code was in there, right? So you didn't know as you were going whether you made a mistake. And, yeah. and and back in those days, it didn't tell you where the mistake was. It just told you it was there was yep. a mistake, all right? Yep. So, so you, <laughs> I remember going. You know, Okay, no, that line's good. That line's yeah. good. Oh, here we go. It's this one little character, you know, 50 lines yeah. in, right? You're playing the, the world's uh, uh, largest word find. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, and, and then, of course, you had to, uh, you, you always make sure, though, then you would save it to your cassette tape, right? Because that, that's what we use for, you know, because, mm -hmm. again, there were, there were no discs or anything. Um, yeah. Or for younger generation, we didn't have the save icon, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so what about old tech uh, uh, what do you see as being the, the the next big thing like in the next 5, 10, 15 years tech wise uh, that's a good question I mean I, it might not be brand new but you know a, a larger adoption of a new thing or well I, I mean yeah and, I mean, so I was going to say I, I think uh, uh, more and more adoption of AI and, and ML mm -hmm. I mean uh, um of course, that's kind of an easy answer because I mean we're we're I think we're in a yeah. prime growth area of that right now. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, well, quantum computing. I I, I think I think in the next 10, 15, I I'm not as bullish as some people are. I think it's going to be 10, 15 years before we we have anything near quantum computing. Uh, um, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean that that will definitely be a game changer. You know, once we actually have that. Uh, of course, at that point, the, I think the we can just all give up on our passwords. Finally, yeah, I'm looking forward to the tipping point when we finally have uh, autonomous cars. Yeah, uh, we're, we're close. I mean, what, what, yeah, well, but I mean, if you have you know one percent of the city using autonomous, you know, have you really gained much? No, but you know, once we get to where you know every like third car or something is autonomous, then yes, yeah, so we'll start to really see yeah. a lot of the benefits. Yeah. So that will be really cool. But I figure that the uh, uh, wearables, implantables, and other biotech melding uh, is really, really going to help all of us. I, I'm a little bit hesitant on that. Uh, uh, I don't know if I really want wearables is one thing. The the the, the implantables, I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I, I got a fear of needles, so I'm like, you know, the, the whole thought of actually embedding something in me, I just. Uh, yeah. um, now, now wearables is another thing. I mean, I was, I was kind of upset 
that Google Glass failed as horribly as it did. Right? I don't know. I, I thought that was the coolest out of. All I mean, I, I never, I never had one because I mean they were expensive. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, a friend of mine had some. Uh, Wes Rice. I mean, I'm sure you know Wes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he was doing some playing around with them. Uh, uh, and you know, I was like, to me, it was it was a perfect use of technology. Uh, yeah. They they definitely needed room to grow, uh, but because of the way how it died, uh, and was so it was yeah. vilified, right? Uh, uh, I, it definitely set that back a long period uh, yeah. to the point you still don't really see anything with you know something on the glasses right yeah virtual reality is interesting but yeah the augmented has always really itched to be a whole lot more to mm -hmm. have you know your your own iron man heads up display for the whole world around you uh, uh you know, if i'm horrible with names then you know everybody who comes within you know so many feet then you know their, their name great to see you again uh, uh chad <laughs> oh <it's>, and <laughs> like that's that. But that was what freaked people out, right? You know, but uh, but that was one of the things I was looking forward to, right? Well, you know, I'm horrible with names, right? I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, and uh, something like that would just be awesome, right? Um, yeah. I mean, horrible with names to the point I've learned, you know, the techniques, you know, the whole say their name several times, you know, cause, I mean, cause, and that yeah. really does help, right? Uh, uh, yeah. But not just remember names, like uh, say I have, uh, you know, kind of to do lists of hey, remember when I see him again, I need to ask him about the yeah. thing. Uh, you know, it just have all this stuff, uh, you know, have your own Jarvis in your head, sort of, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a, a text or whatever overlay or for directions. Um, you know, I'm not listening to a GPS. I see a pretend arrow that I'm, you know, following or something yeah. like that on the road or, or even down a hallway or something. Now, I mean, and they've started doing some, I mean, I agree you, you have to have, have the phone up, right? Yeah. But I, Google has started putting some of that stuff out. Uh, yeah. you know, where it'll over, you know, you see a street view, you know, so you're seeing the actual view of where you're at and it'll yep. overlay a, an arrow on that, which that's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I've seen that in the wild. Them. I know I've seen them do demos. Yeah. But, uh, the other but, thing about the wearables and implantables is, uh, enabling tech, mm -hmm. you know, to, to let the deaf people not hear, but, you know, come close to hearing. And, and there's uh, been some really uh, cool advancements with that. People, not necessarily see, but still get a lot of the benefits of sight. Like mm -hmm. the Pretty House of the Blind is here locally, and one of the apps that our volunteer corps helps them with is Nearby Explorer. It's like a, a, a GPS for blind pedestrians. You know, for yeah. us, we're driving, okay, I want to take this next exit, turn right, but blind pedestrian, you're at 100 South 1st Street, you're 102 South 1st Street, 104 South 1st Street, that's the such and such building, the entrance is this way, and you know things like that. Mm -hmm. And they can point it, you know, like you know, like a tricorder, and say, "Oh, the, the upcoming streets are da 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 da," da. and you know, all kinds of real, cool, cool things they can do uh, that they couldn't do before. Yeah, and there, and there are some things that we have made some really good advancements. Uh, still needs work, but I mean, you know, um, I remember a year ago watching a, a demo that Microsoft was doing, and, and uh, you know, a blind guy who who was pretty much able to live normal life. You know, uh, uh, now he had a big device on his, on his head to make it happen, right? I mean, you know, right. you still need to be able to shrink that technology. But, uh, um, but, I mean, to the point, like, he could go into a restaurant and it would read the menu to him, right? And yeah. so he, he would know what to order. Uh, uh, it would identify the people. And, you know, obviously he had to oh, know cool. who the people were up front. Right. Uh, um, but it would identify the people. So he would know when, you know, Sally joined the table. Oh, Sally, how are you doing, right? You know, she, yeah. she didn't have to introduce herself, right? Uh, uh, yeah, because I mean, I, I can just imagine how, how uh, fostering that would be. You know, not yeah. even know, you know, uh, great, generally your senses are better, so you probably hear someone walking up, but still you don't know who it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, uh, the, the theater company that I'm a part of, uh, last year we had a, an original skit comedy that was Monty Python-esque. So, you know, we wrote our own things and put them all together and they were all, you know, goofy and funny and, and, and all of that stuff. And uh, one of the scenes uh, involved interpretive dance. Uh, and one of our actors is a blind comedian. So when we told him, we want you to interpretive dance, he was giddy every night. He was so happy <laughs> as a blind man. He got to interpretive dance on stage as part of this comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I guess he's got the benefit he has no idea what he looks like so, so he doesn't know he yeah you know, so he doesn't feel like he looks foolish right i mean it's right. 
you know, uh, why can I not interpret dance? Because I know what I look like and I look, I know I look foolish, or at least in my mind, I look foolish, right? Yeah. You know, right. You know, uh, sometimes ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah. But he's also really excited when I asked him to autograph my program, too. You know, yeah. You can't see, so okay, it's over here. Okay, now now it's on. Now go ahead. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped up. Um, any, any party thoughts? Um, no, I, I generally don't think of anything. My brain is normally empty. So, uh, well, the, the one I do want to uh, plug a conference coming up at uh, the end of the year is still planned to be an in-person conference. It's the Women in Tech Conference uh, in early December. I've been volunteering for years. Really, really great. An amazing lineup of speakers that they have. So uh, please do check that one out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I guess the other parting thought is to uh, get involved. Sure, a lot of us are you know kind of trapped at home or whatever, but there are still a lot of things to do. Uh, I try to, uh, like I said, to, to diversify my interest because there is a lot to life. Uh, I could focus on something you know narrow, but I'm missing out on way too much. So you know, try new things, go uh, places, and meet people. Uh, you know, experiment, do you know, like hackathons or volunteering weekends or other things to get yourself exposed to new ideas and skills and techniques and people and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you might find that you love something you never even knew was a thing. Yo, yeah. That's how I got into geospatial data. Oh my gosh, that is really amazing. And she really went down that rabbit hole for several years, you know, doing a lot of really cool things. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. Well, I really appreciate uh, you joining me for the past a little bit over an hour and, and, uh, and uh, you know, speaking of Copalooza's here, uh, um, I don't, it's funny. Normally, when I conclude this, I'm like, "Yeah, unfortunately, you won't be able to visit my city." Well, you you live here, so you. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the funny part is, we actually are still going to beat the Hyatt. It's just uh, uh, just a command center, though. Uh, uh, so sure enough, if you want to come visit us, you 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 can. It's a uh, yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna uh, still working this out, but we're gonna be. We're doing like some side specials, right, to show off the city. Uh, oh, cool. right. You know, and uh, uh, you know, this isn't confirmed yet. I mean, as in, barely even talked about yet. But uh, I'm gonna try to get like the mayor, you know, to mm -hmm. join me for a little bit. You know, to talk about uh, stuff and uh, probably uh, you know some other folks. I, I won't say names while I'm, while yeah. I'm live stream, but uh, other right. yeah, exactly. I, I, we I've just started talking. And of course, the hard part, the pandemic has actually made that harder because like a lot of, a lot of people I work with are also furloughed right now. So it's, so they're, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're not working, but, yeah. uh, um, but yeah, so, uh, cause again, one of the, one of the ideas of Copalooza is to show off the city, right? And, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure as you agree, I mean, this is an awesome city and I, I love showing it off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, oh, actually, uh, one, one thing I, I really miss that we couldn't do this year. Uh, is the uh, the Vetch Robotics World Championship? Mm. Uh, it was really sad that they had to cancel this year, but it's it's amazing. It takes over our uh, entire fairgrounds, which oh, it, it is almost as big as our airport. You know, so for, if you're not from around here, it is enormous. Uh, you got 1,500 teams from over 50 countries. Each team having uh, usually between like five and eight people, plus the coaches and parents, because this is all high school students competing in the world championship for robotics the it takes almost an entire week and the finals are usually broadcast on espn or abc or somewhere it's, but ah oh, we had to miss this time usually i'll take four days off and volunteer mm -hmm. and it's amazing now the first year i was there at the check-in desk uh to help the teams register and okay mm -hmm. you need to go here here's your stuff whatever and next to me there was a you know, a volunteer who was speaking Portuguese and next to me is a volunteer speaking Chinese. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. You have all oh, these yeah. people coming into the city. You know, <laughs> you know funny story is, uh, I think it was last year. Yeah, it was last year, but it was, uh, uh, it was, it's earlier in the year. Um, so it was before I built my status with Delta and, and uh, I go to the airport Monday morning, like, I, you know, like I normally do when I'm flying to, uh, to conferences and, or whatever morning it was, but, uh, uh, you know, Louisville Airport is not that busy of an airport, right? It's, yeah. it's one of those things, you, you know, you don't need a whole lot of time to get through it. It's, it's a pretty easy airport to get through. Mm -hmm. I show up, and and there's just, like, this humongous line, hmm. right? And it was because of all the kids going back home, 
right from oh, yeah. from, from the yep. from the Roblox uh, championship. Right. And, and I was I was like, oh my goodness, right? And, and, and this is at like five o'clock in the morning, right? I mean, when the airport's usually dead, yeah. right? And uh, 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 I remember I was like, I'm not sure I'm making my plane. <laughs> Uh, 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 I did because luckily part for, for you know Delta was smart about it and, and they did finally they, they finally realized like okay anyone in line who's on such and such flight come over here right which I was you know so, cool. so luckily I was able to get, get through right but because uh, uh, yeah. I, I had to check in something but uh, yeah that, that was uh, a fun experience yeah that's my side experience of the robotics yeah. competition is try, trying to fly somewhere right afterwards it was interesting right. Yep. Uh, it, Another uh, really fun event is called Skills USA. It's been around uh, maybe 80 years or something. Uh, it's a, a national championship of like everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have you know virtual reality game programming competitions uh, and T-shirt design competitions and public speaking competitions. There are probably 300 different things, all you know, having their national championships at the same time at the same place. It's an, also an amazing thing to go and visit or volunteer at. Mm -hmm. awesome. A couple of years ago, I uh, I helped judge the National Computer Programming Contest. You know, another nice, cool feather. You can always put in your cap on a resume that you do all these amazing, cool things. How did you even do that? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, again, Dave, I really do appreciate uh, you joining me, and uh, I look forward to it's funny. I usually see you a couple times a month, but uh, but uh, 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 yeah, I do look forward to the time when I can see you physically a couple you know a couple times a month. Uh, yeah. I don't know when that's going to be. I mean, I know my groups right now we're definitely virtual through September, and yeah. uh, I'm I'm hesitant I'm hesitating to, to schedule October, but uh, I know I'm gonna have to do it on, online again. Just, yeah. um, I don't know if you saw, but you know uh, the governor's supposed to uh, put new mandates out today. Okay, well, I, I hadn't seen, I hadn't uh, really been checking much yet. Well, that was, that was the news last night. <laughs> yeah, that was news last night that today okay. the, the governor was going to announce something new. I, I don't know if he has yet or not. Uh, uh, so, hence the, I know I might as well go ahead and schedule October because it's probably, it's going to probably be a while. Yeah. That's so. yeah, not, not a competition or anything, but we, we do seem to be one of the, like, top two or three states in the country in terms of, you know, handling and the number of cases mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah, but like yesterday we had like, or well, I guess it was the day before, but yesterday the number was like over 500 new cases. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, so we're, we're definitely seeing a spike. Like, yeah. like the rest, well, actually most of the world is, right? Uh, it's just the United States yep. has just seen it worse than anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, well, awesome, Dave. Again, I really do appreciate it, and, and I will talk to you later. Sounds great. All right, Bye, see everybody. Ya.